Hi YouTube, this is Patrick, and I went to Shakespeare in the Park the uh, other night. I saw Into the Woods. It's a uh, musical um, by Stephen Sondheim. It's something that I've loved since I was a kid. And uh, I know I usually don't talk about musicals or anything like that on this channel. Um, I actually love musicals. Nothing wrong with that. When uh, this December, when the first Hobbit movie comes out and Les Mis comes out on the exact same day, I'll be seeing both. So. Yeah, nothing wrong with liking musicals. I like good stories, doesn't matter what form they're told in. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to put a little description on the bottom, or like a, a time thing on the bottom that indicates when, when I'm going to start talking about the show. But I guess I should just start talking about the kind of experience of Shakespeare in the Park. Which is, Shakespeare in the Park is, um, it basically takes place around the west side 81st Street entrance. Uh, in Central Park in New York City, right by the Museum of Natural History. It takes place at the Delacour Theater. And what you have to do, it's a free show. They run it through, they've run two shows throughout the summer. Uh, they ran uh, as, as You Like It first, and then it was, which is, you know, Shakespeare. Uh, they usually, I think they usually try to do one Shakespeare show and now one something else. Okay, so it's a free show, but the rub is basically that you have to camp out for it and they don't let tickets go on sale to 1 p.m. of the day of the show and the show is at 8 o'clock at night so the park opens at 6 in the morning but people start camping out the night before outside the park um, and I got there to camp out for this particular show a couple of weeks ago I got there at 8 30 in the morning waited till 1 o'clock and didn't get tickets you can try to get tickets online and other stuff, but um, or pay to get it if you want. But um, yeah, 8.30 in the morning didn't work. So the next time I went, I got up at 4 in the morning. I got to the park by 6 and, you know, got my tickets and that was fine. Um, basically, it's an outdoor theater. So if it rains you and the show gets canceled, you don't get your money back because you didn't spend any money. So you really kind of have to take a specific approach to it you really have to know what you're doing really prepare for it and just prepare for a whole long day thing um basically it is a broadway show you could go online and buy tickets i think for like over 100 bucks i think you can and like i said it's a broadway show that's a typical broadway price so it's really not bad um i mean but most people they just want to pay like i did pay in basically um time consumption and like sleep deprivation which is fine. Okay, let me just explain a little bit of what Into the Woods uh, is about. Into the Woods is basically the stories of the Brothers Grimm. Not everything, but it's a made-up story about a baker, about a baker and his wife, and a witch who lives next door. She puts a spell in their house, and the baker has to find uh, four ingredients by a by the third midnight to break the spell, so we can have a child. And the four ingredients are the cow is white as milk, which is Jack's cow from Jack and the Beanstalk. The cape is red as blood, which is Little Red Riding Hood's cape. The hair is yellow as corn, which is Rapunzel's hair. And the slipper is pure as gold, which is Cinderella's slipper. So all of these stories kind of intertwine uh, by the baker's story. And we see how they play out in every Disney film that you've seen growing up. And they play that way out throughout Act 1. And Act 1 of the show, this isn't really spoiler, Act 1 of the show ends with the happily ever after that, you know, we all know from those stories. Um, now a lot of the show has to deal with parents and children and wishes and stuff like that. And Act 2 of the show is basically about the consequences, consequences of, uh, of getting your wish. Act 2 is very, very dark and um, it really, really makes for a change, and it really kind of makes the show what it is. I first uh, watched this when I was a kid. My uncle taped me uh, a, a recording of the original uh, Broadway cast. I think it was back in 91 or 1990. Uh, I was five or six years old. It was on PBS, and um, he taped it for me on VHS, and I used to watch it religiously. I used to, um, you know, three-hour play musical and I used to sit there watch it finish it and like rewind it and watch it again when I was younger uh, I saw the revival on Broadway uh, about 10 years ago with uh, Vanessa Williams uh, which was good uh, didn't hold a candle to the original because original had people like Bernadette Peters in it Joanna Gleason and um, 
and Tom Aldridge and Chip Chip Zine, who I'll get to in a minute, because he was in this version. Uh, this version of the show, I preferred it to the, the Vanessa Williams version, and it had, I'll get into it later, it had certain elements that were even improvements on the original, um, but uh, this one was really, really good. First of all, I'll just talk about the theater is outdoors, so during the play you hear like planes go overhead and sirens go by, it has a very, very New York feel to it, and that is kind of... They kind of incorporate that into the, the show a little bit, or at least they did with this one. The set, gorgeous set of just all like spiral staircases, all made out of wood and everything like that. Um, just the whole thing had a very like minimalist approach to it, very like low rent, yet not low rent approach to it. Almost like um, when you give creative people no budget and they're forced to be even more creative because of it. And that was kind of really how the, the, the feel of the whole thing was. And um, the sets were gorgeous. The way they handled things, like, you know, the beanstalk and the... Um, oh, by the way, I guess I should say I'm probably going to spoil stuff for the show, so don't, you know, don't watch if you don't want to know. Um, but, yeah, stuff like the beanstalk, which is just the actors standing on a spiral staircase opening up umbrellas and um, using some kind of puppeteer work for the, uh, for the witch in Act 2, the witch that was voiced by Glenn Close, well-voiced. Um, it was just really, really well done. It was one of the best things about it. You know, the show had very good things about it and some okay things about it, but this was certainly one of the best things about it was the sets. Another movie, they kind of sort of modernized it a little bit. It had a fairy tale feel, yet, uh, again, kind of just like a New York or just updated kind of feel. Uh, Jack's mother walked around in like a bathrobe and, you know, slippers and, um at one point was holding like a little mini vacuum and stuff because she's vacuuming up her house. Uh, Little Red Riding Hood had a crash helmet and just looked like a roller girl, uh, roller derby girl. And um, the mysterious man looked like a homeless veteran because I mean, he had the long beard like he originally did, but he had like an army jacket on and every time he said his uh, when first I appear thing, he opened a can of beer and kind of swilled it around and everything like that. Rapunzel in Act 2 um just became like a drinker and she's drinking vodka with her like twins and her short hair and stuff like that so just very there's funny a lot of updated kind of funny little things like that that kind of added to the whole thing and it's just stuff you don't expect to see on that show if you've seen it a million times like i have okay as far as the actors go i would say the actors are they were fine they weren't like anything spectacular or particularly you know crazy like memorable uh amy adams played the baker's wife uh people know amy adams she's like Oscar nominee, you know, Catch Me If You Can, and um, it's Junebug and Doubt, and she'll be in The Master, which is coming out soon, Enchanted. Uh, sings fine, has some weird-looking hair in it, but sings fine. You know, nothing, nothing, you know, oh, you know, not blown out of the water, nothing great, great but, uh, but good. The Baker is played by Dennis O'Hare, who plays Russell Edgington on True Blood. He's has a lot of theater background stuff. The funny thing with him, he sang and kind of talked with a little bit of a lisp, which I didn't know he had. At least I didn't, because on True Blood, he kind of talks with a drawl, like a southern drawl. Um, so I didn't know if he had, I actually looked it up to see if that's if he actually does have one, or if it was just like a choice to sing with it. But either way, I'm not sure. His, like, his vocals um, seem like they would have been stronger in a studio, but he hit plenty of decent notes that not, you know, not to really say anything against him. Again, he was fine. Uh, Donna Murphy played the witch, and she was good. Her uh, last midnight performance probably got the loudest cheers, with the exception of the end of the show. So uh, she was fine. But again, when you've watched it so many times and you know the original cast by heart, and you know the way that they certain the way they sung and said certain lines, it was kind of weird to hear like these actors like you know over emote this line or under or under emote it basically. So some of that stuff is kind of jarring, but that's more at least me knowing the show so much instead of really the actors and their interpretation. My favorite two performances in the show was uh, Cinderella, played by Jessie Mueller. Uh, I just thought she was fantastic. I thought she was one of the ones that I could, like, if I heard she was playing the role again on Broadway, I'd be like, awesome. Um, anyone else, I think, you know, could be or not replaced, and I'd be like, okay, fine, whatever. But she was. I thought she was actually just really... She gave the, the part... Just a lot of emotion, I think more than I've seen before, and um, did a great, did really did a fantastic job with her songs, and 
uh, nailed the moment late in Act 2 where she has to say goodbye to um, her prince. Uh, those guys are funny, by the way, the two princes. They, um, they kind of made them look like Siegfried and Roy. And they had, like, bows and arrows and stuff like that, but uh, they were fine. My other favorite performance was of uh, Chip Zion, who played the original Baker, and he played the mysterious man, or the Baker's father. Um, didn't play the narrator, because the narrator was played by a child, which I'll get into later. But, um, it was, it was just really, it was just awesome to see him. You know, something where you, you see this thing growing up, and that's the guy you've watched, you know, a hundred times from watching the show, and then, you know, there he is, and he's playing that character's father, and it's just kind of, um... It was just awesome to see. He did his little, like, kick dance that he did in the original, and that got a, a cheer from some of the audience members and stuff. Um, and during, like, No More, the song, you know, that he sings with the baker, it uh, it was it was really kind of poignant to see him sing it because it was like he was passing the torch, not necessarily to Dennis O'Hare, but just passing the torch in general of the role. And um, I always thought he got the raw in the deal. And everyone always talks about Bernadette Peters and Joanna Gleason and, you know, and a lot of the other actors on that, you know, Ben Wright and everybody, but I don't see a lot of people talk about him from that, and I think they should. And uh, I hope uh, I hope people talk about him more after seeing him, at least in this part of it. The best thing about the show for me is that when I was five years old, it felt perfect for a five-year-old. And as I've gotten older, it's stayed perfect for different reasons. Things that I loved about it when I was a kid, um... You know, those things have changed. I've gotten older and the show's been able to stay with me because I found different things to enjoy about it that I, you know, didn't realize the first time around. Specifically in Act 2 and really understanding what everything was about. Um, it's kind of like one of those like timeless, like, you know, Disney movies or something like that that you grow up, or any kind of movie that you grew up watching, and then, you know, when you revisit it again, you realize that you love it for all these different reasons, yet they all almost feel like the same reasons. And, um... So yeah, so it just had this very timeless feel to it. And good job on the people that did the show for certain things that were a little less obvious to me as a kid, like especially the Wolf and Little Red Riding Hood, you know, having the understudy of kind of like a pedophilia kind of feel to it or beyond just talking to strangers, that kind of played that angle up a little bit. And uh, in this one, and it was fine. It just felt more obvious and maybe um, more suited for this time, sadly than it used to be. Uh, also, as far as the jokes go, there are jokes in the show that that were hilarious back, you know, in 1991, but are outdated now. They kept those jokes in, but they knew to add a whole bunch of others that today's audience would laugh at, or certain things that today's audience would appreciate. And it's just about keeping a show like the a show like this just fresh and new, and just able to keep, able to just have it sustained. And to the point where I was watching this show, I was like, this could go back on Broadway and find a whole new, you know, group of people to watch it. And um, that's just nice to see that it, it, it won't go anywhere. They actually had a matinee of the show the day we went to see it um, because we had the understudy of our narrator at night, which again was a child, uh, who was fantastic. Um, but I guess they don't want to have, you know, the kid work twice in one day, which is understandable. I don't think they, I don't know if that's allowed on Broadway, I'm not sure. Well, this isn't Broadway. But, um... They performed the matinee for, like, groups of, like, schools and kids uh, the day we went to see it, but they only performed Act 1, which I kind of think is ridiculous, because that's not what makes this show what it... Act 2 is what makes this show what it is. That's, that's I think, what makes everything kind of resonate. And just showing everyone Act 1, you might as well just show everybody, you know, a Disney movie. Um and show them that happily ever after and everything like that. That's not um, what this show is. So I kind of, I, I don't agree. I've heard a lot of high schools and stuff. I know it's like a three-hour show if you show both acts. Um, but for me, it really should be both acts of this show or nothing. And um, I know that Act 2 goes a little too dark, maybe a little too quickly. They kind of kill off people one, two, three right away. And um, I can understand people's argument about the show of that, which is fine, but it just doesn't bother me that much. All right, without a doubt, my favorite thing about the show was the child narrator. Uh, the show basically re resolves around him. It starts with him. He's run, ran away from home. He only has a father. He doesn't have a mother. And he starts, he goes, camps out in the woods, and he starts telling this story. And the whole story takes place in his head, basically. Gave the thing a very, um, a very kind of where the wild things are kind of feel to it. 
which uh, again, both things came out, at least to me, I found both things at the same age, so uh, that just enhanced everything for me. Uh, and it just had the kid, you know, it was kind of walking around all the actors and everything, handing them props to use and stuff like that. It was just really well done. Um, they sang to him a couple of times, like at the end of Act 1 and stuff like that. Kid had a good voice, too, when he had to sing. And um, I didn't know what they were going to do in the second act when they were supposed to, you know, kill the narrator. And they did it. They just did the same thing. Um, and what brought the show full circle was at the end of the show when the baker goes to tell, you know, the story to his baby after, you know, his wife has died and everything. Uh, Dennis O'Hare kind of ran backstage holding the child as, as the baker. And I was like, where's he going? He came back around the front dressed as a regular person looking for his son. So the whole thing is the child narrator kind of fashioned uh, the baker after his father. Dennis O'Hare played, you know, his father also. And um, it just resonated so much better and gave the show such a full circle feel to it because the show is about parents and children. And um, it really, it was just perfect, just down to even the very end where they had the... Um, the kids sing the last, you know, I wish instead of Cinderella and everything like that. So I, I, yeah, I just thought it was perfect. I thought that if they do this show from now on, that's the version I want to see. And from now on, even if I do watch the original again, I'm going to be thinking like, man, I really wish I could see it with, you know, the child narrator. Cause I think really that that is the best version of the show. That's at least that aspect of it. Um, I guess that's it. Uh, let me know what you thought. If anyone's going to watch this, um, if you have any questions about the show or anything else, I'll be very happy to answer. So, yeah. All right, guys. Take care.